my name is Li Xiong. I'm a professor at Emory University. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce our work on federated tensor factorization. This is the project team with PhD students Jing Ma and Chiu Chen Zhang, postdoctoral fellow Jian Lo, Professor Joyce Ho and myself at Emory, and Professor Xiao Qianjiang at UT Health. Our problem setting is the cross-silo collaborative tensor analysis, where the data is distributed at multiple institutions and cannot be directly shared with each other. We consider the horizontally distributed setting, which means each site has a subset of the samples and all sites share the same feature space. Our goal is to perform collaborative tensor analysis as if the data has been integrated while keeping data private at each local site. As a quick background, tensor analysis and tensor factorization are unsupervised learning methods for discovering latent patterns from multidimensional data. They have shown great success in many applications, such as recommender systems and spatial temporal data analysis. Here we use electronic health records or EHR data as an example. As we can see in the middle, the data is represented as a three-mode tensor with a patient mode and two feature modes, diagnosis and medication. The right-hand side shows the result of the commonly used CP factorization for discovering the latent medical concepts or disease subtypes. Each component has a patient factor and two feature mode factors. Intuitively, each component corresponds to a subset of patients with a set of related diseases and medications. Given our distributed data, the goal of collaborative tensor factorization is to obtain the global feature factors while keeping both the data and the patient factors private at each local site. We recently introduced federated tensor factorization as a way to achieve this goal. Similar to federated learning, the sites perform local factorizations using their private data and get the local factor matrices A, B, and C corresponding to the patient and feature factors. Then the local sites send the feature factors B and C or the corresponding gradients to a coordinating server. Note that the local sites keep the patient factor A private, as we're only trying to learn the global feature factors. Next, the server aggregates the local factors and updates the global feature factor matrices B and C. Finally, the server sends the global factors back to the local sites. The process repeats until it converges. While this is very similar to the federated learning framework, federated tensor factorization presents some interesting challenges and opportunities, mainly because of the unique multi-factor structure and proximal updates due to the regularizers commonly used for factorization. Previously, we have developed the first two methods for federated tensor factorization with different optimization approaches. One based on ADMM, which enforces the consensus among the local feature factors using constraints. And one based on elastic averaging SGD or EASGD, which enforces the consensus using regularizations. We found that EASGD relieves the high communication cost of ADMM because it reduces communication frequency and eliminates the communication of the dual variables. However, the communication can be still high and there's no theoretical guarantee of convergence. We then implemented a local SGD-based approach, which does not have explicit consensus constraint or regularizations. It shows the promise of further reduced communication and faster convergence. Following this direction, to utilize the multi-block or multi-factor structure of the tensor factorization and to further enhance efficiency, we developed a randomized block SGD approach. It includes several strategies to reduce the communication cost. This is certainly inspired by many recent progress in communication efficient techniques for distributed or federated learning. To reduce the communication in each round, we have a two-level strategy. At the block level, each client sends only the partial gradient of a randomly sampled block or factor, rather than the full gradients of all blocks. For example, only C instead of both B and C in one round, as illustrated in the figure. At the element level, each client uses gradient compression to compress each element of the partial gradient for example, from float point to a low precision representation. The compression naturally introduces error between the true gradient and the compressed one, 
which can affect the conversions and output quality. To mitigate the impact, we use the error feedback mechanism, which records the residual compression error from previous rounds and feeds it back to the gradient for update. Complementary to the per-round communication reduction, we're also reducing the frequency of communication, just like local SGD, to allow periodic communication after multiple local iterations by the client. Given this combined strategy, we conducted a convergence analysis. While the analysis builds on top of many of the theoretical results for federated learning, such as those for compression and error feedback, the challenge is to account for the block randomized update, as well as proximal update for the non-smooth regularizations commonly used in generalized CP tensor factorization. Our main theoretical result is that we can indeed reduce the communication without compromising the convergence rate, compared to full communication training under common assumptions. We also did empirical studies comparing the approach with baseline and previous methods, and ablation studies evaluating the contribution of each communication reduction strategy to the overall communication efficiency. To demonstrate, this result shows the loss versus communication cost in bytes using the CMS EHR dataset across eight clients. As we can see, different approaches converge to comparable loss, but with significantly different communication cost. If we look from right to the left, the rightmost one corresponds to the most expensive baseline approach, which communicates full gradients and full blocks. Moving to the left, if we use randomized block to update only partial gradients instead of full gradients, or use gradient impression compression instead of full precision gradients, the cost is reduced significantly. We also see that gradient compression plays a more important role in communication reduction. Further left, with both randomized block and gradient compression and error feedback, it achieves a reduction of almost 99% compared to the baseline. Finally, combined with periodic communication, the cost is further reduced. We also see a continued reduction as we increase the number of local iterations between each communication round from 2 to 8. Overall, this result strongly verifies the benefit of the combined strategy for enhancing communication efficiency without compromising convergence and accuracy. Besides efficiency, privacy is another important challenge of federated computation. While the federated factorization we have discussed so far offers significant privacy improvements over integrating the data, there's no formal guarantee of privacy, since the intermediate result shared with the coordinating server may still reveal information. A natural approach is to ensure differential privacy by adding perturbations to these intermediate results before they're uploaded to the server. In our previous study, we showed the feasibility of ensuring differential privacy in the EASGD-based approach using the Gaussian mechanism, which adds Gaussian noise to each element of the feature factors. Given the new communication efficient strategies, the hope is that better privacy mechanisms can be developed to take advantage of the inherent privacy benefit of the communication efficient strategies. More generally, there's a strong synergy among efficiency, privacy, and robustness, the three interrelated challenges. Communication efficient techniques have implicit benefit to privacy and robustness due to the compressed and reduced communication. For privacy, the compressed per round communication means reduced sensitivity, and hence less noise should be required. In addition, the periodic communication means less accumulated privacy loss or tighter privacy composition. For robustness, Compressed per round communication also means inherent robustness, as shown by recent results connecting signed SGD to robust median SGD-based aggregation. So there are many exciting research opportunities exploring the synergy among these challenges. That's it for me. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, we would love to hear from you. Thank you.